as we head to bed tonight, it is not the time to let down your guard. No, so especially overnight storm systems present that yeah. unique challenge. Folks are not just sleeping, but some of them are out of their routine, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe you have guests that are in from out of town. Maybe you came in from out of town. So you need to make sure that you've got a way to get weather information. Our Storm Shield app is a great way to do that. The most important thing is it's a tool that you feel comfortable using. If you don't know how to use it, you won't use it tonight. Volume on, plugged in, that's what will keep you safe in the overnight hours. Our main concern is damaging straight line wind. Look at the scope of the wind associated with the system coming through the pink color that stretches from the Great Lakes back towards Kansas City. High wind warnings, wind advisories stretch down into Kentucky and down into Middle Tennessee. This is an incredibly energetic system. Wind gusts upwards of 40 to 50 miles per hour expected here. Parts of Oregon reported wind gusts. I think I saw higher than 80 miles per hour with some of the energy with this system. It's just been a powerhouse. So our wind advisory is mainly for our counties that are along and north of I-40. It goes through 6 a.m. tomorrow morning because we're still waiting on the cold front. That's where most of the energy will be focused. So by midnight tonight, we expect 40 mile per hour wind gusts across the area. The actual front, that's almost where these, uh, it almost looks like a zipper where the wind field comes together. That slides through between 1 a.m. and 6 a.m. Once the front clears you, the wind will gradually start to wind down, but it's going to be stubborn to relax completely. Conditions will still be breezy on Wednesday. They just won't be howling like they are tonight. We have had a steady soaking rain across the area as well, and this is not the front. As I mentioned, this is just rain and moisture and energy that came together out ahead of it. Not much as far as thunder for us. There were one or two strikes that tried to drift into parts of Davidson County, but all in all, this is still just a soaking rain setup. It's this uh, line right here of higher reflectivities that's coming down Interstate 24. It had a three hole lightning strikes with it, so not much thunder just yet. As the actual cold front comes through, That'll be after midnight tonight. That'll be the final push. So pockets of heavy rain drift off to the northeast over the next few hours. The front will come through quite quickly between 1 a.m. and 6 a.m., likely impacting downtown around 4. That's when the wind will be the strongest. It may howl enough to wake you up in the middle of the night. By 6 a.m., the rain is gone. Some milky skies on the backside of this, not much sunshine, and it will be noticeably cooler. So widespread wind, number one concern. The tornado threat is not zero uh, or is not uh, zero, but it's very, very, very low in the overnight hours. That being said, you got to have a way to get that information. I will be here keeping an eye on the radar storm shield app. Like I said, that can be what wakes you up. Sneak peek at Thanksgiving looks better, <laughs> <laughs> looks a lot better than today. Just about a 20% chance of rain, and that would mainly be around midnight Thursday night. So if you're going to be frying the turkey, I had someone tell me they're doing a rib roast and they need it dry for that. Should be dry to start. 56 is your sunrise temperature. 50 is your 3 p.m. temperature tomorrow. The mercury is going to do all kinds of backwards things. It's just going to go the wrong direction all day long. So plan on it feeling brisk and cool. You're going to wake up Thursday morning in the 30s. And if this isn't enough, Roy, we've got another system, a windy, wet system that looks to impact us Saturday night, which is when a lot of folks may be trying to travel back home. So we have to keep an eye on more travel impacts this weekend.